أشهد أن محمد رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the fourth episode of the Quranic Depression Survival Guide. I hope everybody is doing good. Today I am going to talk about the second half of Surah Al-Duha which is وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى And by the night when it covers with darkness. To begin, let's ask ourselves an easy question. How do we describe our days of hardships? If I am not wrong, all of us use the word dark or darkness for our difficult days, don't we? You know how we use the expression, that was a dark period of my life. Unlike the brighter days of our lives, what happens when it's night? We find ourselves not just in a metaphorical darkness, but a lot of times we find ourselves alone as well. And not just alone, but too often without any support. We might even feel stuck as if the flow of life has come to a halt. Our optimism is gone, most or even all of the friendships are gone, because as they say, Even your shadow leaves you when it's too dark, right? Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Have you considered if Allah should make for you the night continuous until the day of resurrection, what deity other than Allah could bring you light? Then will you not hear? Over and over again, we see Allah Azza wa Jal invites us in the Quran to think deeply about His creation and what it can teach us. So what is the ayah Wallayli Iza Saja teaching us? What kind of lessons are we able to extract from it? The ayah sounds simple enough, but only on a surface level. This ayah is actually teaching us a profound lesson. What is that lesson? The lesson is embracing our whole self. The lesson is to embrace our whole self. It sounds pretty simplistic, I know. Embrace your whole self, yes. But I can assure you it feels far from it once we decide to acknowledge our complete self with good qualities and dark traits both. It is rather easy to look at our strengths and overlook our negative aspects of our personality. Actually in some cases it is easier to look at our negative uh, aspects of our personality and we are just not able to see our own strengths. That happens too. So to embrace our whole self and not just those parts of a personality that we like or feel comfortable acknowledging is not an easy job. To embrace our whole self and not just those parts of our personality that we like or feel comfortable acknowledging is not an easy job. But here is the thing, when we are around other people, who are we? Are we showing them the parts of ourselves that, let's just say, are acceptable to them? Or are we our whole personality? Why am I asking this question? Because 1. It tells us a lot about ourselves. And 2. It tells us a lot about people we are surrounding ourselves with. Interesting, huh? Let me give you an example. You may have come across this fact about how there are people who suffer from depression but they seem very happy and cheerful around other people. In fact, most people wouldn't be able to believe that this person is suffering from depression because these people are that good at hiding their pain. The question is, why are they hiding their pain? Is it because people around them have made them feel that their grief is something unacceptable to them? That they will be judged and judged harshly for expressing their mental anguish? And what happens when all the company is gone and they are finally alone with themselves? Obviously, they stop pretending. They stop pretending to be happy. And we have known many cases like these. Somebody commits suicide and people get shocked because they never thought this person would commit suicide. When we remember this reality and then read وَالدُّهَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى We naturally begin to understand the importance of accepting ourselves. Not partially, but completely. When Allah Azza wa tells us, say, have you considered if Allah were to make the day continuous over you until the day of resurrection, which God other than Allah could bring you night for rest? Imagine, imagine for a moment, really imagine what havoc it would wreak on everything around us if something like that actually happened. 
if actually there was only day and no night or there was only night and no day just imagine what would happen so what is it teaching us that day and night they are both important just as day and night is in pair and this is actually interesting because in the quran we read how everything has been made in pairs so day is paired with night what is e is paired with hardship inna ma al usri yusra indeed with hardship is is indeed with hardship is is how so well what comes after the day night and what comes after the night day the cycle of day and night is a natural process of life and so is ease and hardship a natural process acknowledging this reality helps us accept the nature of life itself which means here we are learning to not pretend to be happy all the time because not only is that impossible but it is quite unnatural as well life comes with its highs and lows so then why mask our pain to look happy all the time especially when we feel like we are crumbling inside to accept both pain and joy is to accept our wholeness to accept both good qualities and unhealthy traits is to accept ourselves fully and allah says in the quran and out of his mercy he made for you the night and the day that you may rest therein and seek from his bounty and perhaps you will be grateful how important how absolutely necessary is this cycle of day and night because allah azza wa jalla says at the end of this aya perhaps you will be grateful both day and night serve an important purpose and both are essential for growth but the question is how to accept this fact we can accept day and night but accepting what we might think are our darker aspects can be rather difficult because that means taking a good look at oneself that's not easy nobody wants to take a good take a good look at himself or herself now what happens is that we usually think that we know ourselves actually we don't even think about it unless something happens that makes us question our own thoughts or motives or behavior or our you know autopilot routine but when something triggers this need for introspection windows to self discovery open for up for us the more introspection we practice the more self aware we become it is as if we start revealing ourselves to ourselves and that gives us a platform to become better version of ourselves because obviously the best way to work on ourselves is to first know who we are in the first place what are our weaknesses what are our strengths what our preferences are what our triggers are and don't forget the why you know i love the question why why do i have this particular weakness why do i have these preferences even when i can see that they are not good for me if something triggers why does it trigger me when you know what and why you you will also know the how how do i work on my weakness how do i change my preferences how do i make sure that i am not triggered by this particular behavior or word or topic so we get to know which areas of our personality we need to work on which qualities need more nurturing which unhealthy coping mechanisms need to be let go of and which qualities need to be cultivated this opportunity for introspection is mostly provided through hardships setbacks challenges hardships should make us reflect now please understand when i say we have to accept our whole self i am not saying that it means i uh, you know when i am angry i smash things and that's who i am so i am accepting it <laughs> this is me people have to you know uh people have to accept me as uh, as who i am no no that's not what i mean because we look up to laqad khalaqna al insana fi ahsan taqwim we don't say we accept our whole self so that other people will adjust to our you know our personality we are not going to change anything no 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 that's not what we mean we are always a work of progress we are always working on ourselves we are always aiming at laqad khalaqna al insana fi ahsan taqwim that we want to raise to that potential so that means we don't just stop there we don't say well this is who i am i have accepted myself completely and you need to accept this reality too 
No. We acknowledge our weaknesses in order to work on those weaknesses so that we can become better human beings. Because character is something that is valued in Islam. The best of you are those who are best in character. So we have to continuously work on our character and in order to do that we first need to be brave enough to see ourselves in a clear light. How can we do that is something that we'll be talking about in the next episode inshallah. Until then, have a good time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.